Bonks is about uh, two brothers, Dane and Dylan, who uh, are kind of troublemakers and, and their parents kind of get fed up with them and want to send them away to boot camp. Uh, and once we see the boot camp bus, we're like, no, we're not going to do that. So we went to Camp Bushwhack, which is a, would look to be a much nicer camp. Uh, and then once we get there, we find out that it's uh, haunted somewhat and we find a, a, an old book of kind of scary stories that uh, the old camp curses that when you read the stories, they come to life. Mm. Who knows mm. what will happen next? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I played Dane O'Reilly, the slower and more confident brother. Fun-loving older brother. Fun-loving older brother. Classic. <clears throat> and uh, I welcome everybody to the camp. I'm uh, Wookie, the head camp counselor, second only to Crawl, camp director, played by Christian Batenza. And um, I guess you could say I'm the guy who doesn't really have a clue as to what's going on. He pretty much accepts <laughs> these guys for whoever they say they are at the drop of a hat. Yeah. And uh, I am the proverbial red shirt to get bit first by a zombie, but yeah, it's all fun and games from there. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's kind of hard to describe crawl from my point of view because um, usually when you describe a character, you know, when, whenever I'm doing a character, it's there's a little bit of separation. But with Crawl, it was pretty much just me. Um, so it's like doing your own bio. It's like, I don't know how to describe it, but I would, uh, I'm gonna throw out a few words. Like, uh, man-child. Um, did I say man-child? Yeah. No, I, Crawl is, uh, Carl's an interesting character because he's he's kind of one of the kids. He's on their level, but he's on a different plane altogether. And really, he's the only representation of adult in this sort of kid world. And um, I don't think he really sees himself as an adult. He sees himself as their buddy. But he's the only guy that can probably drive, you know? So uh, there is that. He knows he's responsible for these kids, but he doesn't really take on the pressures of being in charge. You know, this is his, his camp. He's the director. He's the top. But he's just basically hanging out. And uh, there's very loose margins to the... Uh, I mean, like he says... There's three rules, and he kind of lives with those three rules, and that's uh, that's about the extent of him. My character Lauren is a very shy person. She's very to the book, um, and throughout the film, you see her grow, and she does become more loose, I guess you could say. And I think that the whole experience and journey in the camp and all the people there help her realize that not everything has to be like perfect. So that was fun to play, to have such a dynamic character and go from one place to another. I actually heard about this a while before I auditioned. Yeah. Um, Jennifer, who worked on the show, she lives in my neighborhood and I see her all the time when I'm walking along the beach or walking my dog somewhere. And she just came up to me and said, hey, good to see you again. And I said hello. And then she said that this was a project they were working on and they'd love to have me on board. And I went, okay, cool. I'll see you when that happens. And cut to like six months later and they have an audition for it. And I auditioned for Dane originally and then got a call back. And we, they flew us out to Vancouver and there were three other guys going for Dane. None of whom were Aiden. I mean, I wasn't Aiden wasn't there. I don't know where I was. <laughs> and so then I eventually got, I got Wookie. It's like, okay, so you got the call for Bunks. I said, oh, cool, but it's not for Dane. It's for Wookie. And I said, well, uh, okay. So which one <laughs> of the guys got it? Two minutes which, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but which one of the guys in Vancouver got it? Yeah. None of the guys. Aiden Shipley got it. And I went, oh, yeah. <laughs> this is a sweetheart. Yeah, we were at the same agency. We didn't really know each other beforehand. Um, but yeah, I went in for one like audition and it was like, no one was, it was like the casting like assistant and a camera. 
And it was like, we did it, and I was like, it went really well, and I was like, I think I did really well on that. And then I didn't hear for like a month, I was like, no I didn't, I did terribly. And then I got a call, I was like, so we got a call from Bucks, and I was like, sweet, I got a call back. And they're like, no, you just, you go on set. And I was like, that's what? And like, they're sure about this? Like, <laughs> they've seen one take of me do, all right, let's give it a shot. And the gamble paid off. <laughs>
I think it's a chance for them to go back and revisit some childhood memories, fantasies, and, uh, and once again, zipper into the entertainment part. But uh, that's what I think they can expect, to be entertained and also to go back and for the older people to revisit their childhood a little bit. It's Halloween season. So it definitely has that Halloween-y kind of thing going to it. Um, but there is a lot of comic relief. And in every horror story, there's always comic relief. But in this especially, there's always something funny happening, which, you know, takes the scariness away from it. But obviously there's still like spooky moments in it. Just like I was saying, influences from The Walking Dead, which people like as well. But if you're too scared, there's always a time to laugh. I said this at the screening that we had last week, and I'll say it again, and that's if you're serious about being an actor, never treat what you're doing like it's a business. Mm -hmm. Never do it just because, oh, you know, they pay you so much, and oh, you know, you know the money, I gotta, I gotta pay the bills and all that. But if you look at it as an activity and just something that you love to do, and you're just gonna dedicate your time to because it's fun and you love doing it, then that is a much better attitude, especially going into auditions. Yeah. Because you don't feel the pressure of, oh, I gotta get this job, I have to work, or else, you know, yeah. I then work you're somewhere else. You'll be thinking about that while you're trying to exactly. be somebody else. Yeah. I, I think the other piece of advice is just to be be prepared to have thick skin. Because it's like if it's if it's something that you want to make a career out of and something you want to do on a consistent basis, you're gonna have to get used to rejection like all the time. You're gonna go in and, and people are gonna say no to to you, basically like you as a person, are like, no, not today. And you're like, okay. And you have to like completely drop it as soon as you walk out of the room and, and move on to the next one. And so yeah, even if it goes well. Yeah. Just drop it. And you know, well. Yeah. Make sure it's something you really want to do. Because it's not something you can kind of chase half heartedly. Yeah. I would say really commit to it. Because if you're just putting half of yourself into it, you're not gonna go anywhere. If you really want to do it and you know that it's what you love to do, you need to commit fully to it. You need to be driven and you have to really love it because it's all not just glamour, there is a lot of hard work to it. So if you really love it, you will be able to make it, I believe.